Because a lot of people go and study and then a lot of people go in prayer. But if you don't really love him, how can you pray an effectual prayer? Peter describes this, and I won't go over there and stay there, but he said, given all diligence, add to your faith. Faith means you're a believer. Add to your faith. What, knowledge? No, that's not what he said. Add to your faith. What, power and miracles? No, that's not what he said. Add to your faith virtue. Then add to virtue knowledge. Then add to knowledge temperance. People forget that little word virtue. Before you ever pick your Bible up to study it, you need something called virtue. What is virtue? Virtue is excellence, a desire to excel, and a desire to want to be righteous, a desire to want to be right. Until you have a desire to want to be right, whatever you read is just going to be mere words. You need virtue because virtue flips the switch to say, hey, I'm here to worship in spirit and truth. I want to know you. I'm not just another religious head that want intellectual knowledge so I could talk and impress people. No, Father, I want you. So, giving all diligence, that means you got to make an effort. Add to your faith. You got to add to your faith virtue before you even get knowledge. If you don't have a desire to be like him, your knowledge is not going to really help you. I pray you hearing what I said. This, what I just said there is, is a secret that many people don't know. I'm talking about many. I'm talking about doctors of theology, pastors of congregations. They have knowledge. But then you wonder, why did he go off and sleep with that woman? Why did he molest that child? Why did he take all the money from the church or some of the money from the church? Go back to virtue. When you lose your desire to please him, I feel the presence of the Most High. When you lose your desire to bow before him, to see him smile because you're doing what pleases him. When that's gone, the devil has an entrance way. And as a roaring lion, Peter says, he walketh about seeking whom he may, small word, big impact, whom he may devour. What determines may? That virtue in there. How bad do you want it? That virtue makes you available. For the knowledge. Virtue helps you to empty out yourself. You're saying to the Most High, fill me with knowledge. But at the same time, here you are, eight ounce glass. You got six ounce of worldly stuff in you. And you say to him to fill me with knowledge. You, the most you can get is 2%. Or two ounces. But then that two ounces is going to go in with some other contaminated stuff. Virtue says, let me empty the cup. Let me mortify my flesh will. Let me deal with my flesh. Tell myself, you ain't going to do what you want to do anymore. You ain't going to say what you want to say anymore. You're living to please him. Then you pick up that Bible and watch how he shows you. Oh, I pray you hear me today. See, but religion won't teach people that. Man-made system won't teach them that. It'll teach them they're emotional. Somebody could have died. So that some child could be sick. They come down to the altar. They feel bad. In their heart, they still want to stay in sin. In their heart, they still lie. But they just feel bad for the moment. And they come down and he say, well, do you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross? Yes, sir, I believe it. Do you believe he died for you? Yes, I do. Say this prayer behind me. Jesus, come into my life. You say a few words. Tears coming down your eyes because you're in a bad place. But yet in your heart, you still want to be in control. You still want to rule your life. You still want to call the shots, but you got saved, according to man. Then we wonder why two weeks later, you back in the club, back sleeping around, back lying. Why? There was no virtue. There was no desire to leave your old life, to repent and turn away. And that's one of the most, one of the most deceptive tools the devil was using today. And then on top of that, they add to that. Now, once you get saved, talking to the same person that was moved emotionally, moved emotionally and, and they said some words, but they still want to please the devil and not please God. You say to that person, now that you're saved, you can't lose your salvation. What, what, what? This is, magicians can't pull off some of this stuff. You just convinced a person who didn't really see God, didn't really 
get a vision of how sinful they were, didn't get a vision of how holy he is, you now told them they're saved and you told them you can't lose your salvation. A lot of people are going to be mad, but it's going to be too late. When the devil said, come on in, this is your home now. But, but, but I said a prayer. I got saved. You got saved according to men's ways. That, you know, I tricked things up. I mixed things up a little bit. I, I, I told men that if they say this prayer, they'll be saved. But I, I, and I got the preachers not to look at people's heart, not to get them to look at their hearts and feel bad for where they are so that you could be here today. Now you're dead. Come spend eternity with me. See, they're going to be mad, but ain't nothing they could do about it then. But he'll send somebody like Shep to tell you that yes, there is a process. When you hear the gospel, the gospel will make you feel bad about you. And it will cause you to appreciate him. Many people come and appreciate him. Thank you for dying for me. But they never feel bad about themselves. Why? The Bible said that godliness. Well, that's one that said godliness with, 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 with uh, contentment is great gain. But it says uh, uh, godly sorrow worketh repentance. Huh? You got to be sorry for you, sorry, feel sorry for your sins. That's a sign to the most high that you see what he's saying to you. You got to see your pitiful condition. Not that you got a lot, you lost a loved one, not that your child is in the hospital. No, I'm talking about your spiritual condition. So this is the light that came so men can believe. All right, I sent you over to 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. It says, in whom the God of this world, little G-O-D, God, Theos, there I believe is the word, of this world, world, this system, this arrangement that Adam left us in after he fell. In whom the God of this world, and that would be Satan, has blinded the minds of them which believe not. The reason why they don't believe, because the devil has kept the light from them. So, so if the, the light is on this side, here's my mind, say I'm in sin, the devil puts up a blind here. So that when the message is shared, you, you hear words, but you don't actively see the vision of somebody loving you so much to die for you. And you see your sins and how miserable you are. You, see, but when the devil is, 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 when the most high, when the devil is removed, now that light can hit your mind. But prior to that, he blinds you. Some of you as believers try to win your brothers, your sisters, mother and father. And you wonder what's going on. It's because they have not actively heard the gospel. When they actively hear the gospel, I mean spiritually hear it, they're going to get a vision of his greatness and they'll get a vision of how messed up they are. Says now, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ. There it is. The gospel of Christ, gospel there, message. And that message is glorious. What makes it glorious? It's of the spirit. And that message of Christ is glorious, meaning it got glory. He's the brightness of his glory. That message shines. I used to go out on witnessing teams. In fact, train witnessing teams. I'll be a part of certain churches. And I'm a person excited by Christ. I'm in love with Christ, you know. And even though I'm a pastor and teacher, some people take that as being an evangelist because I get excited. And sometimes I, I, the most I use me to stir people with my words. See, the word Christ spoke with power and authority. See, they can't teach you this in seminary. Now, I took communications in college. I, I, I'm a trained, I was a trained certified instructor in the military. I was a trainer in the military, meaning I trained soldiers. Not just my own soldiers, but other soldiers from different different uh, squads or whatnot to come to hear because because I was trained. I was given that identifier that they put on the end of your occupational skill to say this man is qualified to train. So I'm a trained instructor. I know I know how to do certain things naturally to 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 be able to help people understand. But at the same time, when it comes to preaching the gospel, that stuff can't do anything. That stuff is like throwing garbage in a bag. It is the Spirit's ability coming upon me to help me. His light showing me what to say. And then I ask him, I don't want to just say what you say. I want to feel what you're saying. So when you see me get so excited and all the rest of it, he's allowing me to feel the passion of this glorious light, this glorious message. But the gospel is light. I want to show you that, okay? So let's go back. Let's go back. Uh, 
Let's go back here a little bit. Let's see. 